are about to dive into the fascinating world of fractions. It's all about understanding how things can be divided into parts. That sounds intriguing. I'm ready to learn. Fantastic! So, in math, fractions help us represent parts of a whole. Imagine you have a delicious pie. Each slice is a fraction. And we use numbers to describe them. Right, whiskers. The top number in a fraction is called the numerator, and it tells us how many slices or parts we have. The bottom number is the denominator, which shows how many equal parts the whole is divided into. So if I have three slices of pie out of four, what do I call that? You'd call it three-fourths or three over four. It means you have three out of the four equal parts of the whole pie. Fractions are like a secret language for describing parts and wholes. They're used everywhere. For instance, if you have eight marbles, and three of them are red, you can say, it's three-eighths that are red. I see how fractions work now, but what if I want to add fractions together when the denominators are different? Good question, Bob. To add fractions with different denominators, you need to make them have a common denominator. Find the least common multiple LCM of the two denominators, and then make both fractions have that common denominator. After that, you can add the numerators together. For example, if you want to add 1 over 4 and 3 over 6, first find the LCM of 4 and 6, which is 12. Then, rewrite 1 over 4 as 3 over 12 by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by 3 and 3 over 6 as 6 over 12 by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by 2. Now, you can add them together. 3 over 12 plus 6 over 12 is equal to 9 over 12, which simplifies to 3 over 4. And speaking of simplifying, it's a good idea to reduce fractions to their simplest form. For example, if you have 6 over 8, you can simplify it by dividing both the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor, which is 2. So, 6 over 8 simplifies to 3 over 4. Got it! What about multiplying fractions? How does that work? Multiplying fractions is simpler. Just multiply the numerators together to get the new numerator, and multiply the denominators together to get the new denominator. For example, if you want to multiply 2 over 3 by 4 over 5, multiply the numerators, 2 times 4 equals 8, and the denominators, 3 times 5 equals 15. So, 2 over 3 times 4 over 5 equals 8 over 15. And dividing fractions is a bit like multiplying. Instead of dividing, flip the second fraction, the one you want to divide by, and then multiply. Thanks for explaining, friends. Fractions make much more sense now. You're welcome, Bob. Fractions are a key part of math. And understanding them can help you solve all sorts of real-world problems. Absolutely. Let's consider everyday situations where fractions come in handy. Imagine you're following a recipe, and it calls for 1 over 2 a cup of flour. Fractions help you measure ingredients precisely. Or, let's say you're planning a road trip, and you've already traveled 304 of the distance. Fractions can help you estimate how much longer you have to go. And don't forget about shopping. If you find a sale offering 25% off an item, you can calculate the discount using fractions and save some money. Wow, fractions really are all around us, making life easier. Thanks for the real world examples, pals. You're welcome, Bob. Fractions are a practical tool for solving everyday problems, big or small. Now, my friends, it's time to wrap up our chat about fractions. Finding Chinese proverbs directly about fractions is a bit tricky. But here's a neat one that fits the bill. 千里之行, 始于足下. 
which translates to a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. In this proverb, the single step represents the initial fraction or part of a long journey. It emphasizes that even the grandest endeavors start with a small, manageable action. I've picked up a ton today. Can't wait for our next lesson, pals. Catch you later.